welcome to today's broadcast produced by Mark Inc. Ministries. Today's real life help and hope story will encourage and equip you to walk by faith in your own life journey. Perhaps you are struggling with a similar life crisis or long-term pain. If so, it is our hope that what you hear will help turn your heart toward the help and hope that Jesus offers, no matter how painful the journey. You may not be experiencing the same hard places you will hear about today, but someone in your circle of life is probably struggling to navigate a similar broken place, and this story will better equip you to help another walk by faith. To listen to the entire broadcast, visit markinc.org, where you will find the rest of the story. Hey friends, I'm Sharon Betters and I am the host of this Help and Hope podcast produced by Mark Inc. Ministries and it is such a privilege to share this time with you. If you've been hanging around the podcast very long, you know that our mission is to offer help and hope, especially to hurting people. And the way that we do that through this podcast is we share redemption stories. We go into some of the darkest places that people experience, life crises, and we offer not only the hope of the person sharing the story of how God has met her or him there, but also ways that we can come alongside that hurting person. And one of the reasons, the main reason we are so passionate about doing this is because when we lost our 16-year-old son Mark and his friend Kelly in a fatal car accident, there were those who stepped back from their journey. They were further ahead of us in their own grief journeys. And they stepped back to walk with us and to encourage us to know that God is sovereign and we can trust him. And God kept many of his promises through those people. So we knew we wanted to do that for others, especially those that we may never meet. We pray that this conversation is going to encourage you. And that's one reason I'm so excited to have Elizabeth Turnage today as my guest. We are not going to be talking specifically about a life crisis in a particular, except one that every one of us is going to face. And that is uh, as we face the season of life where we're getting closer to stepping from earth, we hope into heaven if we know Jesus. And Elizabeth has been on the podcast before where we talked about hope in waiting. She has written a book on the waiting room amazing book and all this information will be in our show notes where you can uh, catch up with Elizabeth and learn more about her ministry. There's so many things, Elizabeth, that I could say about you, but she is a Bible teacher. She is a gospel coach. She did write the best-selling devotional, The Waiting Room, 60 Meditations for Finding Peace and Hope in a Health Crisis, as well as the book from Recovery to restoration. She and her husband, Kip, have walked through multiple crises, and we've talked about that together, Elizabeth and I, and recoveries together. But they enjoy spending time with their four adult children and their spouses. And Elizabeth is has become a grandmother since the last time we talked. So we share that special joy. So Elizabeth, welcome to the podcast. I'm looking so forward to talking to you about organizing your life and legacy. That is going to be our topic for today. And um, it's so needed. And I'm so excited to have you today. Thanks, Sharon. It's great to be here. Well, before we jump into our topic, I'd like for you to tell us a little bit about yourself and something that you are enjoying in this season of life. Yes. Well, as as you said, I, I have been married. We just we celebrated our 40th anniversary this this past September. So that's that was really fun. And we brought all of our family together for that. And we have four adult children, three of whom are married, and all three of them had babies this past <laughs> year. So so the first was born in February, and then we had one on November 1st, which it's my birthday, so that was very oh. special. And she's actually named Elizabeth, but she's nicknamed Birdie. So that's really fun. And it was my 60th birthday. So that's the best 60th birthday <laughs> present you can get. And then our, our third grandchild was born just a few weeks later, November 21st. So we say we are going to have an awesome cousin camp. And we just, we really enjoy all of our adult children and our grandchildren. That's that's kind of how we like to spend our time these days is going. They're all kind of 
you know, they're close enough to drive. And so we just kind of make the circle of, of visiting all four of our adult children and, and the rest of the family. So I love hearing this. And I love you mentioning the cousins camp. We've been doing that for many, many, many years. And now we are reaping the fruit of it because our grandchildren are young adults and older teens, and many of them are best friends. And it's because I know it's because they had that quality time together. It's amazing. You might think a week isn't that much time, but it is. And then of course, all of ours live close. So we spent a lot of time, you know, having them. And now we have three great grandchildren. So the cycle is again, but I love watching their grandmother's grandparenting them and and expressing the same joy that you are expressing it's so fun it's really fun what a gift uh these grandchildren are yeah I'm, i'm so grateful well you and i have talked before and we talked about your first book the waiting room and then you wrote a book from recovery to restoration and i'm just curious as to how you got from those topics to where you are today, talking about legacy and storytelling and organizing our lives for this season of life. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it is, kind of, I mean, the Lord just takes us on these journeys. So it's a, a natural progression. But the waiting room was about a time of a health crisis in our family. And I really wrote that for people to have help and hope to have the hope of the gospel in the waiting room for patients and for caregivers, because I was the caregiver in that situation. And then I thought, well, there are other people. And I think you and I are, you know, like-minded in wanting to minister to people in crisis or people who are hurting. And so from recovery to restoration was kind of about all sorts of crises, whether it's whether it's divorce or whether it's recovering after a natural disaster. We've been through Mm -hmm. several hurricane recoveries in in our world. We live in Pensacola, Florida. Um, So just ministering the hope of the gospel in those places. And then I mentioned in the waiting room that my dad had died in that season. And then a few years later, actually in 2021, my mother died really unexpectedly in the sense that she was a very healthy 83 year old. And then she got COVID and um, Mm -hmm. right after we thought she was turning the corner, she died. And so my parents had been divorced since I was seven. So, you know, they had been divorced a long time and they did things very differently. My dad, even though he knew he was dying, he had a, a terminal diagnosis for two years he was so afraid of death and dying that he really didn't prepare anything. He didn't have a will. He had an advanced directive because mm-hmm. I asked him, I was his caregiver and I asked him to, to do one, to give me some of his wishes if, if he got into crisis. But, you know, he really, he really didn't have, you know, he had left no indication if he wanted to be buried or cremated. On the other hand, my mother had all of that prepared. She saw how it was hard for my brother and me with my dad. And I mean, she was already a very organized person Mm -hmm. and very much about, you know, leaving a legacy. And um, but she she literally left when she died. Um, There was a sheet of paper, a file folder, and then a sheet of paper on top, what to do when I die. Mm -hmm. I mean, that specific, and then files and information, all that information. And I was the executor of her estate. And so here I was in just very complicated grief, you know, death due to COVID is very complicated. And especially after you think somebody is getting better and then the next night they die but in the midst of that grief, I had this guide. And so around that time, I just, I was like, everybody needs help with this. And so I began, I moved into life and legacy coaching. And I have a good friend who's a social worker who it has worked in hospice and palliative care. And so we began this workshop together to help people organize their life and legacies. And, mm-hmm. and that's, that's kind of the journey that the Lord took me on to bring me into this, mm-hmm. this particular ministry. Elizabeth, what a gift your mother gave to you. 
Oh my goodness. And I love that you are doing exactly what the scriptures teach. You are offering to others the comfort that you have been given. And we experienced a little bit of that when my parents died. They had planned out their funeral. I mean, we didn't have to, we didn't have to guess about anything. And it's it is, it's an incredible gift to give to the next generation. You um kind of compared your dad and your mom, and really it's an indication of a different worldview. What is your worldview? So tell us what worldview you are pushing your your response to these different events through and what you're doing right now. Yeah, well, everything for me begins in the hope of the gospel, the the good news that that Christ lived and died for our sins and he was raised from the dead. And because of that, we have the hope of glory. We, you know, <laughs> We can actually use the word death and dying, and the Bible uses it a lot, but because we have that hope, we we can do what the Lord commands us to do in Psalm 145. It talks about meditating on the Lord's awesome deeds and about telling the next generation and whether that next generation is literally children. I mean, we have children and grandchildren, you do. Not everybody does, but if we are believers, then anybody who's, you mentioned this earlier, a little bit behind us on the journey of knowing Christ and knowing his love for us and knowing that he died for us and anybody a little bit behind us is the next generation. So, so the center of this is, is passing on the goodness of God to the next generation, but Part of that, what we see in the Bible is we see it over and over again, people passing on instructions, passing Mm -hmm. on wisdom, passing on, you mentioned redemption stories, you know, passing that on. And so, you know, part of what my mother passed on to me was very practical wisdom. You know, it's kind of like what we see in Proverbs, just very, you know, the Bible is, is nothing if not practical, even though Mm. it's all about spirituality, it's also about living practically. So Mm. if we have the hope that we, you know, when I die, I'm going to be with Jesus, I'm going to be good. I'm going to be okay. You know, that I have that hope, but I also know my children are going to be grieving. So I want to think proactively how do I help them when they are in the midst of their grief? Mm -hmm. Like your parents helped you by saying, this is what we want for our funeral. This is, this is where to go for this. I've already Mm -hmm. paid for this, you know, that kind of thing. So it's, it's, um, it's centered in the gospel, but it has its outworkings, both in the legacies we leave non-material, what I call spiritually. And then the, what I call the practical legacy, just these these details about life. So one of the verses that you have focused on is from Psalm 90 verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we get a heart of wisdom. What do you believe are some of the benefits of numbering our days? When we are able to admit, and this is very countercultural, but when we are able to admit that our days are numbered, and we know that that is true because that's what the Bible tells us that that you know the days here on earth in this way is very fleeting, especially in the long term view of we are going to live for eternity with mm-hmm. with the Lord, and and you know we're going to live in the new heavens and the new earth and. Anyway, I, I won't I won't get off too much on on that great glory that awaits us. But when we know that, we think much more intentionally about how we live each day. And and we know that we are disciples of Christ. And so we're called to go into all the world, whatever that all the world is for each one of us, and to share the good news. And so we, we just, we just live much more intentionally and, and we think about the, the freedom we have in Christ. And we think about the calling we have in Christ Mm -hmm. to tell the story of grace to others. So we live more intentionally. 
But we also do think, and I think I've already said this, we think more proactively mm-hmm. about preparing. How do, how do I prepare for glory? I'm writing a book on this, this concept right now, you know, facing death and dying with the hope of heaven. How do I prepare? And how do I bless my loved ones? How do I give them a gift that will help them when my days on this earth are over. So mm. it's it it really benefits us, but mainly it helps us live more intentionally, more fully, more wisely, and it helps us love others by preparing these gifts for them for when we're gone. Or you know, mm. we all know the stories of somebody, and I'm sure many of your listeners, when you talk about crisis. When somebody very suddenly has been in a car accident or, you know, at our age, people have strokes and they're unable to share these things. So we, I want to be prepared for that moment. If I end up in in a hospital, unable to communicate things, I want, I want my husband to know those things that, you know, what my wishes are and to have that help for him when he's in the midst of grieving or uncertainty, like what's going to happen? What should I do? What would Elizabeth want? I I want that written down so that he Mm. knows. Well, we're going to talk about how hard that is for some of us Mm. to address. But before we do that, I want you to tell us a little bit about the course that, that you are offering, Organizing Your Life and legacy, because you have definitely put feet to your heart, to what you want, not just for yourself, but as a means of helping others. Yes. So I have a co-leader who works with me in this course, and she is absolutely wonderful. I mean, she just, she loves the Lord. She's very biblically grounded. And she is a licensed clinical social worker who has worked in the realm of palliative care and in hospice care. And now she's working with the VA. So she, I mean, she knows all things. She knows she has been with caregivers and patients when they are in the types of crises that I'm talking about. And so we have come together and just to to help people think about it, we have we, we help people gather what we call the first four of the practical legacy. Well, let me go back before I say these first four and second six. We are now offering a three-hour in-person workshop. So it's, it's the jumpstart version. Like there's a lot of stuff that we can do. So we're offering that. So if any of your listeners say, oh, I'd love to have that workshop at my church then, you know, contact me and we can talk about coming to your church or your retirement. You know, we're planning to do this at assisted living facilities, but that's, that's one way we offer this course. And then the other way that we offer it is a 12 week online by zoom, by video. So you, you watch videos with either Kelly or me talking about one of the topics, and then you, you do some of your work. And then you come back and you watch the next video. Mm -hmm. So we are offering that more in a self-paced course. So people can kind of do that at their own pace with two live sessions. So those are, those are the two ways that we offer organizing your life and legacy. And then what is the content of that course? Well, we, we talk about kind of two different types of legacy, practical legacy and spiritual legacy. And the practical legacy, we break down into the first four, which is our will, advanced directive, durable power of attorney, and passwords. We'll talk about Mm. that a little bit later, more in depth. And then the second six, financial records, insurance, medical records, essential documents, like your marriage certificate or your driver's license, you know, Mm. just those birth certificates. We don't always need those, but We need some of that information, biographical information, and then end of life wishes, like we've already mentioned, you know, what is your wish for funerals or, you know, burial or cremation, all of that sort of thing. So that's, that's what those courses are about. Mm -hmm. And the jumpstart three hour version, that's obviously, we're just helping you see this is what needs to be done and giving you a little bit of help getting started with that. Mm 
Well, I love the word intentional and I love everything that you're saying. I am one of those that whenever my husband and I start talking about these things, I start crying. And Mm -hmm. so I know that it's hard for people uh, and I have the hope of the gospel. And like you said, I'm going to be fine, but dealing with it is, it is difficult. I think for some people to get started uh, doing it. And yet I'm also thinking of a friend whose husband died suddenly and she didn't even know how to pay the bills, how much money was in the checking account and just very simple things like that, which was an alert to me. Okay. The conversation when my husband was having a quintuple bypass surgery emergency, and he's trying to tell me things that I needed to know because he didn't think he was going to survive. And that's not when you want to have those conversations for sure. So what are some of the things that, and I think you cover these in your course, obviously, but that are the most difficult for children, adult children, we're going to look at it from adult children that have dealing with when their parents die. What are some of the hardest things that they have to deal with that you say we can prepare for that to make it easier? Yeah. Yeah. And you're so right, Sharon. It does, you know, we recognize in these courses that that talking about these things does bring up grief for us. And we talk about grief because there's something called anticipatory grief. We're in a way, you know, you're empathizing for your children and grieving for them because you know that they're going to be really sad. So that is a reality that, that we need to face and discuss. And I'm actually, that's why I'm writing this book called preparing for glory. Well, that's the tentative title, but facing Mm -hmm. death and dying with the hope of heaven, but, you know, actually facing this and then saying, okay, this is, this is going to happen one day. This is a reality. So what, what are the things that will be hard for my children? And that, that very much varies on, you know, I've already given you two different stories of my dad and my mom, but we first of all do want to remember that they will be grieving when they are facing these tasks. And so that helps us get motivated to do these things because we say, oh, it's already going to be hard for them. So what can I do for them? Well, certainly, as I've already mentioned, you know, preparing a will, uh, one of the things that we want to recognize, and it's, it's sad, but true. I talked to an estate lawyer about this, that if we don't leave a will, we can cause, there can be deep rifts in the family and conflict. And, and one of the things that this estate lawyer told me is tell your people to discuss these things with their families, even if they're leaving mm-hmm. less to one person. He said, you're not going to be there. Tell them ahead of time, mm-hmm. have conversations. So that's one of the big things that we want to stress is communication. Mm-hmm. So leaving a will, leaving this essential information, and we do often don't realize, and particularly the older we are, like my dad didn't even own a computer. He died when he was 83. He did not own a computer. So there wasn't a lot that was online for him. But for many of us, we have so much information just in our phones. And so we do, If we will gather our passwords and everybody listening, put a password on your phone because it has a lot of very valuable information. So if we will gather that, and even if that, like for my mother, she had written all of her passwords in a Microsoft Word file. It doesn't have to be in one of those online password keepers, but that is really nice. That's that's another conversation. (laughs) However you decide to do it, I, I, I stress that because a lot of people think about wills. Some people think about advanced directives, not as many. That can be so helpful if somebody is in a crisis. Does my husband want to be put on a ventilator if it comes to that? There are so many medical procedures that can be done and the doctors will throw all of them at us. So we need to have wisdom as Christians and that's one of the things that we talk about. But Let me just hit a few more of the highlights. The the passwords can kind of be a guideline. You can find if somebody keeps like financial information, online banking, credit cards. There's so much information that you can find if you have the password information. 
leave information about how I pay bills. Do I do them? Is it online? A lot of people do that these days. <laughs> That's probably why your husband was trying to tell you all of these things. Mm -hmm. Like, and here's what I want to say. It, it gives us peace now to do these things. And then we can, we can visualize like I'm sure my mother did when she wrote what to do when I die. And she wrote down five things on that sheet. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure she had like a book or a course that she was following when she did that. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure she imagined me, cause I was the executor of her estate. She imagined me picking up that sheet of paper and saying, mm -hmm. I know that Elizabeth will be able to follow these steps. And mm -hmm. one of them was called the lawyer. And another one was called, she, she was a Episcopalian called the priest. The Mark Inc. team hopes that this story will help turn your heart towards Jesus. To hear the rest of this story, visit markinc.org where you can listen or download the resource for free. You'll also find numerous other stories like this that help us navigate the really hard life crises that so many of us experience. Please help us keep Mark Inc. on the air with your gifts. Visit markinc.org, that's M-A-R-K-I-N-C.org, where you can safely give or you can call us toll-free at 877-MARK-INC. No gift is too small. Thank you for your support in sharing this story with others.